Well, American Coal South Africa has been providing extensive COVID support to our employees and host communities, in particular around Emala Hleni, Steve Swete, and Govan Becky municipalities. And our response plan, if I may explain, includes distribution of food parcels to vulnerable families. And those are families uh, with the elderly, child-headed families, and families with people living with disabilities. We decided to work with district command councils, the Department of Social uh, Development, and local community members to ensure that the beneficiaries of these food parcels are indeed people in need. We have thus far supplied uh, about 4,000 families in our host communities. But over and above the food puzzles, we've identified communities with water shortages and provided water and sanitation to ensure that when we encourage each other to adopt good hygiene practices, communities have got the wherewithal and essentials to be able to practice that good hygiene. As a result, three water tankers and seven Georgia tanks are based in areas where there is great need for water and sanitation. We've also continued our supply of fresh and clean water from our Emalacheni water reclamation plant to the local municipality. Furthermore, what we decided to do was to work with the Provincial Department of Health, and we've provided medical supplies and personal protective equipment for our frontline health workers in the province. As part of our WeCare program, we identified eight clinics in and around the communities which we decided to support. And that support includes training of community health care professionals. Um, we continue to engage with the department on how we can support the clinics with screening and testing requirements. Now, coming to education, uh, as you probably know, institutions did close and we have got scholarship students. And what we decided to do was to provide them with laptops and data to enable them to continue with their learning uh, whilst under lockdown from their homes. And we've got grade 12 students whom we've also helped. We provided tutors from around April uh, so that they could provide support via WhatsApp and Zoom uh, with the focus specifically on maths and science. We, we've also decided to help these schools, roughly 50 of them in the, in the municipalities, uh, where we operate, we've provided masks for, for learners, thermometers, face shields for teachers, sanitizers. And when schools decided to come back, uh, we also helped with the deep cleaning of the schools where it was required. And we do this not just on our own. We've been working with our local business partners. And one of them in particular donated two sewing machines to a local SME who is now supplying cotton masks to other businesses in and around um, our banks. Let me assure you, Constance, that actually it shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, and we welcome women as potential supplier partners. Uh, and in fact, we have set specific targets for black women-owned enterprises in our procurement uh, spend across the business. So if you want to register on our database, here is the very simple process you can follow to self-register. Go to our website, www.angloamerican.com, click on suppliers, and then how to become a supplier. Bingo, you registered. And somebody should be able to get back to you at that point in time. Last year alone, we spent roughly 1.3 billion with local black-owned businesses. And several of these businesses are owned by black women. Let me say that our regional supply chain departments meet with each mine on a regular basis uh, so that they can so that procurement and other tender opportunities can be set aside specifically for local companies. And what we do before issuing any tender, we send out a request for information so that new and existing suppliers can send us their company profiles 
They're then invited to participate in upcoming tender processes. Once a tender has been awarded to a local bidder, we help them get a vendor number and provide onboarding support at no extra cost to themselves. Now, local 100 black-owned companies are given preferential payment terms, roughly of 14 days from the date of invoice. And this compares to 60 days for bigger companies that have always done business with us. Let me suggest that uh, you visit uh, and interact with the local hub of our enterprise development unit, Anglo Zimele, and, and what they'll be able to do if a new supplier is to offer you uh, and, in, and enroll you into a development program to help you to begin to grow, to understand what it, uh, what it takes to do business with us, but actually do business generally in and around the mines. Let me say to you that we are big, we are on a big drive to link more local SMEs to our supply chain. And last year, we, as I said, we spent 1.3 billion with worst communities um, uh, and mostly black owned businesses. And as I said, some of them being women and youth owned businesses. We do have a number of initiatives in place to grow this figure further. And let me just um, uh, bring to your attention some of them. And these include something, things like unbundling uh, big jobs that traditionally are done by big companies into smaller manageable scope that SMEs can do. We also identify opportunities that we can ring fence specifically for SMEs. We also are in regular engagement with local businesses forums. We advertise in the local areas. But more important, we make these opportunities available at our Zimele hubs which are located within the local municipalities. And I urge you to visit those so that you can avail yourself to what opportunities are in fact available. Plus more information that uh, Zimele is able to provide you. We are absolutely committed to increasing our, our, our business with homegrown SMEs. This is a life, a once in a lifetime uh, challenge, and there are no prescribed methods to manage this. But what we have tried to do ourselves is to think about this in a very intentional way. And what we did is to establish a mental health support program, but specifically targeting three categories of people. One are people who generally have not been infected um, themselves but are anxious for one reason or another. It could be you're just anxious that you'll be infected. You could be anxious that a loved one will be infected. Whatever the case might be, you need help. Then the second group might be those people who have been told that you potentially are infected or have been infected. And as we speak right now, are in fact ill. Or people who have lived through the illness and have recovered. These are people who have suffered the trauma, have looked the the, the, the deadly impact of this pandemic straight in the face. They need support, but very different support to the first group. And the third group are people who have lost a loved one. Could be a colleague, it could be a family member. They also need support, but very different support that allows them to grieve with dignity. And that's, the, in essence, the pillars of the program that we've put in place. I want to say that as a business, we've been very fortunate thus far that we've not experienced a COVID death. But we have continued to put measures in place to support our employees and their families should this or care. Let me give you a bit more specifics. Uh, we partner with Careways, and Careways provides professional confidential and can advice and counseling on a 24-7 basis. And this is available not just to our employees, but to their families as well. Now, added to this, we've gone further on the sites and appointed a team of what we call mental health first aiders. And these people are trained to become the first go-to colleague you can talk to should you suffer any mental distress 
as a result of what I described, anxiety, trauma, and or bereavement. And they will help you to deal with that. And if necessary, can refer you to a professional that you can talk to. Equally, we also have provided tools to our managers and supervisors because we do recognize that they are under pressure. So what we've rolled out is access to the Headspace um, uh, work app, which allows them to get the necessary help techniques to be mindful in meditation to reduce stress levels, improve their sleep partner, patterns, and hopefully their overall health. Now, on this particular property, my suggestion is that, in fact, if you've got an interest, register your interest with our business development, we'll be able to look uh, at your interest. And if this property does not fit our long-term mining plan, we'll be able to discuss that opportunity with you. But let me say from a broader point of view, um, when you look at our, mine, at, at our mining rights and or prospecting rights, always think that we have a longer mining plan. Not always are we mining every piece of ground that we own because we plan these over decades. And for that reason, you might see something as we don't, as if we are not going to mine it. We are busy developing projects. We are going to some of those. And only in circumstances where we are unable to mine that are we prepared to discuss those um, with interested parties. Now, you should be aware what the law requires. That where we have got... Um, pieces of grounds or tenements that we need. We are required to provide our mine works programs, social and labor plans, environmental plans, closure plans, and so forth. And therefore, we take a longer term view of these than might actually look obvious. And we continue to meet our obligations in that regard. As far as I know, at this point in time, there is not much in our portfolio that we don't plan to mine. But should you be aware of something, I invite you to approach us and we can have a discussion with you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.